Hi everyone, welcome back to the One World Site Project video blog series. Before we get started, I'd like to make a few announcements. This will be the last video blog based on the trip to the I meeting in Buenos Aires, Argentina. You'll be hearing, in a few minutes, you'll be hearing um, Ahmed Trebelsi talk about eye care in Tunisia. But before that, I want to say that this will be the last one from that meeting and the next series of blogs will be live or near live from Tanzania. And it will happen to be in the rainy season. Now, I don't know exactly what to expect. It may be something like this. But I'm not exactly sure. So stay tuned and you'll find out. In the meantime, I'd like to thank some of our donors for making this possible. The previous trip possible and this current trip. Gene Terry and Trent Rhodes, Danny Sun, Christine Carr, Ava LeBone, Ed Rennie, Chauncey Sayre, Harold Weiss, Reiner Rothis, and of course, the people at Allegan, Arletta Hijni. I'd like to thank everyone, and some, there may be some names that I've missed, but you know who you are, and thank you very much for making this possible. So we'll be le I'll be leaving in about two, uh, 48 hours to the rainy season in Tanzania, and you'll be able to see exactly what the country's like. We'll be traveling throughout the country in many locations. And if you're interested in what, how other people live and how eye care is delivered in Tanzania, uncut, you'll see, and you'll, you'll be able to see that. And you'll also be able to see exactly how your money could be spent in relieving suffering. So thank you very much. And here is Ahmed Chabelsi from Tunisia. If you'd like to make sure that you get in on these blogs and they're not in your spam filter, Go to the One World Site Project homepage at endblindness.org. Now, if you Google, just remember end blindness. Go to Google and end blindness and we'll come up number one. And you, when you click on our website, there's two portions of the website you can go to. The blog part of the website or endblindness.tv that has some other videos. There's also a section for you to sign up for our mailing list. And that way we could send you the current information. Thank you. Well, I'm here with my friend Ahmed Trebelsi. Now, this is very special for me because I first met Ahmed 18 years ago in Nairobi. Yes. You remember that? Yes. I can barely remember it. But it, you're making me feel old because you look just as young as you did exactly 18 years ago. For me, it's a different story. How about the gray hair? <laughs> uh, maybe the gray hair. You have a little bit, but there's still fire. There might be what? snow on the roof, but there's fire in the first. longer hair. At that time. I did have longer yes. hair, yes. 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 Well, anyway, um, Ahmed works his private... Um, his private practice is Les Asamologistes Associés de Tunisia, de Tunis. I just wanted to say that in French. Um, but his formal eye care organization is called Nadi Al Basar. Now, what does Nadi Al Basar mean? Uh, Nadi in Arabic language means club, and Al Basar is vision. So it's a club of vision. And the idea came to Professor Rida Mabrouk in 1980 to create this non-governmental organization. Actually, basically, it was for educational programs for the doctors and paramedics. And then in, Tuni in all Tunisia? In, in Tunis. And then we grew up by volunteer ophthalmologists join us. So we had three programs. One of, in addition to the educational programs, we have the cataract surgical team, which is a mobile team full of volunteer, vol volunteers. And we go to the areas deprived from ophthalmic care and we do the cataract surgery free. Okay, so now, how much of your time do you spend at that versus a private practice? I think it's one third of my time because every six weeks I'm away and we cover North Africa, Middle East, and now we are in the Francophone African countries. So basically all the French-speaking African countries in Northern Africa, that's where the, the Nadi Abbasar is active. Yes, we call them the Sub-Saharas. Okay. Well, I'm going to show a few video clips of what keeps you going. I'm yes. sure. I mean, when I, I got chills when I watched these videos, and I'm sure they'll be very interested, very interesting to the people who are watching this. This is what brings it home for everybody here. Just being able to make a difference in people's lives, and I think that once it's hard to explain, but once you're actually there and you see a person changing their life immediately like that. With, it, with a simple procedure, 15 minutes. Right, 15 and, minutes. And, and next day he's a different person. 
This is the hospital in Cameroon, in Yaoundé, and that's a child of four years old, born with bilateral congenital cataract. And so he, he can't see at all? He's totally blind, and his sister as well. So we took him and we operated his cataract, and of course, we uh, implanted an artificial lens. And now he's restoring back his vision, and he's checking the hand of the representative of the Islamic Bank of Development, which is sponsoring that. And the whole family and the neighbors are watching him for the first time. You see, he's guiding his way, and now he located this piece of paper, which he couldn't before see before. Before the operation, he could never He couldn't, up. yes. And now you will see his sister standing there shy, waiting her, for her turn for surgery, because both of them are blind. So this is an example, actually, of what we're doing in, in African countries. So the boy started to see, and he's squeezing his eye because of the light he's not used to. So Ahmed, what are we seeing here? You're seeing an, a man of about 60 years old. He's been blind for more than 15 years because of cataract, and nobody did the operation for him. These are the surroundings, and now we've taken him, we removed his cataract with a simple operation, as you know. And then after that, we're going to watch this guy, how he's going back to his village on his own without a guide. And he's so happy. And look at that. He's so happy. But what I like is the reception of his wife. She's, she's receiving him with a lot of happiness. And she, you see, she couldn't believe that he's walking on his That's own. His wife. Yes. Okay. What are the biggest things that you, what are the biggest needs that you have in, in Tunisia? In, 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 in the Tunisia, area that you take care of. Tunisia is, is, is well off. I mean, the human so, resources and infrastructure are superb. And we have four universities. We have not so you're that. fortunate to be able one of the, to be one of the countries who actually help the, all the other countries. Exactly. Okay, and, and among the countries that you help in, in, in your catchment area, what are the things that you need the most? What are the biggest challenges? And what could be done if you had a million dollars? What would you do with that million dollars? I would take care of the human resources. I would train people and get them ready to take the, the action. Human resources is, is the, the most, most important, important thing. Yes. Well, that's a coincidence yes. because there's a course given right now on yes. human resources, yes. and I'm going to try to get try to learn a little bit more about it. Do that because the infrastructure already exists because they have they have the most fantastic machines, but it's dusty and rusty. If nobody knows how to use them, exactly. They have so basically, it's training is what exactly. we need. Yes. yes. Um, so. so you're responsible you're, for the area of a hundred million people. I'm not responsible. I just feel. You take responsibility. I, I, yeah, I, I would love to help in this area. I'm, I mean, we are a group of volunteers, ophthalmologists. 65% are ladies who are professors at the university. That was Come. really surprising, the 65% yes. are women. The ophthalmic community in, in Tunisia and even in Libya and, and Morocco is, is full of And maybe you could tell me, what I always picture in uh, Muslim countries that the women don't have as many opportunities. So how how is it, it was kind of surprising to me that there's 65 percent women who are ophthalmologists. Those were the days, my friend. <laughs> Things have changed a lot. Things have changed Ex a lot, especially in Tunisia. In Tunisia now, women they have more rights than the men. <laughs> and <laughs> you should be careful, actually, because they are getting very, very strong. The really, women movement in Tunisia is really superb. The human rights, and the they call it the the family magazine, which controls actually the relationship in Tunisia. And Tunisia is the only Muslim country where polygamy is prohibited by the law. Oh, really? It's the only Muslim country where polygamy yes, is prohibited by, by law. Yes. So if if you if you if you get another wife, you go to prison. Wow. If you say she's my girlfriend, they will let you lose. Okay. Well, then I'll know what to say when I'm there. <laughs> yes. So, I don't mean that, Portia, at all. I love my wife. <laughs> and if you're watching Portia, I love you. Okay. Well, I think we should cut the interview right here. Okay.